Well, welcome to Heritage Presbyterian Church. Our hope, indeed, our prayer, is that if you've come here seeking the Lord Jesus Christ, you will surely find Christ in our midst. In the words of Scripture, those are God's words to us from the beginning of time throughout all of time. In the words of the hymns we sing, that's our response of thanksgiving and praise to God. And in this, the body of Christ gathered on this Labor Day weekend. Wow, thanks for being here. <laughs> to worship and to praise God and to give thanks for the God who worked for six days and on the seventh day rested. So welcome, welcome. We're so glad to welcome Dan Meyer as our organist, guest organist today. Uh, welcome to you. Uh, Gary will be back next week, but he's taking two weeks of well-deserved vacation. So we welcome you with open arms, Dan. Thank you for being here. Several announcements. The first, if you take out your bulletin, I've got a little interactive stuff going in, on in here. So uh, look at the call to worship. It says, shout to the Lord, to, shout for joy to the God of Jacob. So you all say that together, and then you will actually shout in church. One time only. Okay, so let's try that together. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. You guys are good. Now, we're not going to reveal the other song sounds, but when we say sound the timbrel, wait for a minute. Don't jump right in, because there might be a tambourine. When it says, sound the lyre, wait for a minute. And who knows, there might be the sound of a lyre. And when it says, the trumpet at the new moon, wait for a minute. It might not even be a trumpet. It might be a shofar. We don't know. But, uh, but at any rate, so as we read through the call to worship, listen for those sounds that the psalmist is speaking of, and so that we can get into... Because it says here, worship God with every fiber of our being. And that's what we're trying to do today. And every day, actually. Also want to invite you to sign the Ritual of Friendship pad. It's right here. And it helps us to celebrate your presence in worship. It helps you see the name of the person you're, you're worshiping right next to. And you can greet them during our greeting time. Also, I want to let you know the nominating committee is meeting, and they are looking for the people that God is calling to be the elders, the spiritual leaders in our church. So if you've got some idea of someone that God is calling to be a spiritual leader, spiritual leader in this church, then let one of those nominating committee members know, and uh, we will consider that name as well. Next week, guess what we're doing next week? We have a mission co-worker from Syria, Lebanon and Iraq. Isn't that amazing? I, I just amazing to me. And, and she showed the picture that will be on the bulletin cover. There used to be hundreds of thousands of Christians in, um, in, in Syria. And there's a picture of a church with a big lit cross. And now there are only about 100. Isn't that tragic? Yeah. So anyway, she's going to talk about the mission, the ministry that PCUSA is doing in Iraq, Syria, and, uh, and Lebanon. If you want to, to spend a little extra time with her, she's going to be at the manse at the Heritage House on Friday evening at 6 o'clock. So do let us know if you'd like to come. Uh, the mission committee will be there, but we'd love to have two or three or four or five or ten more. And uh, it'll be fun if, we're all fill, if we fill up the house. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's right, thank you, thank you. Don't come on Friday, because we, we, yeah, no, come on Saturday. Yes, yes, thank you for reminding me, Susan. I'm glad Susan's going to Malawi with me. It'll be a, we can help each other out on the way. So Saturday night at six o'clock, let us know if you're coming at the Heritage House. But do for sure come Sunday morning at nine o'clock. She's gonna be doing slides in Fellowship Hall and presenting what's happening with the Presbyterian Church USA in Syria, Iraq, and Lebanon. And then she'll be preaching on Sunday. So that'll be exciting, exciting, exciting. And that's not the only exciting thing we have. Uh, Catherine, would you like to share a little bit about the uh, retreat that's coming up? Uh, when was the last time we had an all-church retreat? Does anyone remember? Okay. Well, this is the first one in a long, long while. says this, to engage in activity for enjoyment and recreation rather than a serious or practical purpose. 
Does play seem inconsistent to you with a serious theology of God? Would it surprise you to learn that playing is actually in the Bible? In Zechariah chapter 8, verses 4 and 5, we read these words. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Once again, men and women of ripe old age will sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each with cane in hand because of his age. The city streets will be filled with boys and girls playing there. There it is, playing in the streets of Jerusalem, the young and the old together. We invite you to come play in our streets at our church retreat, September 13th through 15th. Come young, come old. Come with your canes, come with your stroller. Come join us for a time of worship, refreshment, and renewal as we discover how playing before the sovereign God makes a contribution to the coming of kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. In addition to the keynote addresses by our guest speaker, Reverend Dr. Cynthia Rigby, there will be delicious food, of course, couldn't do it without that, and a time of recreation. Perhaps you will want to go outside and play a game of volleyball or join in fellowship hall for a board game. You could do some gentle stretching or you could meditate on scripture through the age-old practice of Lectio Divina. However you choose to play, we hope you will join us as we explore our theme, Living God's Kingdom, a Theology of Play. Cost is only $10 per person or $25 for family. Tish Oliver and I will be in Fellowship Hall following the service to answer questions and to accept registrations. The deadline for registration is September 8th, so please don't delay. We hope to see you all there here um, September 13th through 15th. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Catherine. Yeah, so do come. Cynthia is a friend of mine, uh, and she is dynamic. She is fun. She is inspirational, and she will rock our thinking and, and understanding of theology. So come and, and share that time with us. Okay, we'd like to also invite Kitty to come and to share uh, some of our birthdays. Kitty? Welcome to the first Sunday in September. It's also the first day in September, so fall is upon us. Are you ready for shorter days and cooler nights? Falling yes. leaves and crisp, ripe apples yep. and beautiful mums. Well, I think it's also a spectacular month to celebrate a birthday. Please join me in wishing the following 16 family members and friends of heritage in their fourth sets of twins today, or this month, uh, a very happy birthday. Today's birthday is actually Jeff Galante's birthday, September 1st. Vivian, birth Vivian Peterson's birthday is the 14th, though she will be celebrating uh, with our Heavenly Lord this year, but we will miss her on the 14th. Bill Sams is on the 15th. Bianca Warner and Claudia Santa Anna on the 16th of September. Di Diana Johannes and Dwayne Lovell on the 17th of September, Sarah Sams on September 19th, Mike Messman, September 20th. If you all are here, please raise your hand. I forgot to mention that before, but please do that. Jess Henderson, her, I'm sorry, Han Hernandez and Ann Strom celebrate on the 22nd of September, Jim Hayes on the 26th of September, Holly Vaughn on the 27th of September, Glenn Willis, on the 29th of September. And our last set of twins is Marge Hernandez and Kayla Thompson on the 30th of September. May our Heavenly Father watch over you, bless you, and smile upon you. And may his love fill your life with light every day, and especially on your birthday. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kitty. Well, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
for those who are able, please stand for the call to worship. Sing aloud to, uh, to God our strength. God Up for joy, the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. Raise a song, sound the tambourine. The sweet sound of the lyre. Blow the trumpet at the new moon. At the full moon on festival day. Let us worship God with every fiber of our being. Please be seated as we come to God with our prayer of confession, knowing that this God of all creation forgives us in Christ. Let us pray. Beloved God, revealed in Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and praise for the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. We confess that we don't always live in the love that Christ died to give us, we confess that our spirits don't always reflect the joy and compassion that your Holy Spirit bestows upon all your disciples. Forgive us, God, and let your justice, kindness, and love flow through our lives into the lives of others. Hear us as we pray silently to you.
friends, who is in a position to condemn only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And this same Jesus Christ prays for us. If anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. Now the old life, that's gone. But behold, a new life has begun. Friends, believe it. It's the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. We are forgiven. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us take a moment and pass the peace of Christ.
77 in the New Testament. Luke 14, verse 1 and verses 7 through 14. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He, he said also to the one who invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of righteousness. Amen and amen. Well, I want to invite the young people in our congregation to come forward for the children's message. And I want to extend a soft invitation. I heard what Jesus said. And he said, those who are sitting in the back are invited if they would like to come to the front. <laughs> so I just want to let you know there is room in the front if you'd like to take Jesus seriously and literally. So just knowing that, uh, uh, yeah, there's some, some room here and some here. If anyone wants, soft invitation. <laughs> now, do you guys ever have big family gatherings? Do you? Yeah, can everyone fit around the big center table for dinner sometimes? Sometimes. But if they can't, in my family, when we had a big gathering at Grandma Olson's house, they would put the kids at a kid's table. Is that, is that what happens? Is that what happens? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's usually off to the side. So come on over here, we're gonna, we're gonna hang out at the kid's table for this talk. Yeah, yeah, so we get to sit in these little chairs. Oh, they sit at the, you sit at the normal table and they sit at the, okay. Well, in my family, if, if we had a big meal, the kids would all sit at the kids' table. Now, the adults were happy because they could have an adult conversation and they w wouldn't have a lot of spilling at the table, but we were happy too because we wanted to hang out with our cousins and our brothers and our friends who were the same age. So it's kind of cool to have a kids' table. Now, I want to tell you, we've got a very honored guest. And you know, with an honored guest, we should put her at the head table with the minister and the clerk of session and the music director. But you know what Cindy, Dr. Cynthia Rigby, told me? She says, I want to sit at the table with the youth. So she wants to sit with you guys. So whenever she comes, and this will be on our Friday dinner, um, she wants to sit with you. And guess what? She told me that for all the publications, she's Reverend Dr. Cynthia Rigby, but for us, she's Cindy, because she's a friend and a sister in Christ. And so, uh, so I want to invite you to the retreat and to sit with Cindy and just find out about her. She's really fun and really interesting. But I do want to tell you one more thing. In God's kingdom, God has enough room at all the tables, the big table, for everyone old, young, people from Malawi, people from uh, Alexandria, people from our church, people from other churches. It's a big, big table. 
And so, uh, so we don't have, I just put this little children's communion table up because I had, was having fun with it. And, uh, but we don't have a children's table at this church. We have a communion table and everybody gets invited. So let's pray. Dear God, God, we give you thanks thanks for your big, big table table. where everyone is welcomed, everyone is is fed, fed. and everyone is loved. loved. In Christ we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. have done well as well. Thank you so much. Well, now we turn to the Hebrews lesson, and it's Hebrews 13, selected verses. And I invite you to listen and hear these words. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to the strangers, for by doing so some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, and those who are being tortured as though you yourself were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all. Let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money. And be content with all that you have, for God has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruits of our lip that may confess his name, 
and do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I saw an interesting sign when Joan and I were hiking at Rock Creek Park last weekend. It was right there in front of the horse stables, and it said, please use your inside voice. Isn't that kind of funny? Kind of ironic, I thought. Here we were in the great out of doors, and the stable folks wanted us to use our inside voice. The voice we use not to disturb others. The voice we use to express care and to express concern. The voice we use to pray. The voice we use to tell a secret to a friend or share a a quiet meal. Apparently, they wanted us to treat those horses and their owners and their riders and the strangers who were in the stable to treat all of them like our friends with our inside voice. And so we did. It was easier for Joan than for me, but we did. And the writer of Hebrew extends a similar invitation to treat strangers as friends. And it's more interesting in the Greek than it is in the English. In English, it says simply, let mutual love continue. Good. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. Good. But in Greek, it says, let brotherly love. And the word for that I can remember because I got a lot lot of relatives there. The word for brotherly love is Philadelphia. Let brotherly love Philadelphia remain. And do not forget to show stranger love, philoxenia. For unconsciously, some have entertained angelos, angels, or otherwise messengers of God, and been unaware. It reminds me of the food cupboard we had in the church I served in Pennsylvania years and years ago. And one of the folks who came in to get food at the food cupboard, I wanted to introduce to one of the deacons in our church who had stocked the food cupboard. And so I introduced this deacon as a minister of compassion. And the woman's response to me was, well, I'm a minister too. And she started to tell me all the acts of kindness that she did for God. And I became aware in that moment, I was entertaining a messenger of God. And that's not the only time it's happened to me. I was alone in the church one morning, and this person came in, and they needed desperately a train ticket to get home to their family. They had a tragedy in the family, and they needed $100 to get home to buy the train ticket. And so I was a very young pastor. I didn't know all the protocol of what you're supposed to do and not supposed to do. And so I gave him the $100 for his train ticket, and then I started to worry. Was he going to use it for something good, like a train ticket? Or was he just going to use it for something bad, like alcohol? I was still busy worrying into the next day, and another stranger appeared. I'm thinking, oh, no. He was a salesman. He had just made a big sale, and his profit was $1,000 on this big sale. And he really wanted to give 10% back to the church And so he gave, you know how much he gave me? Yep, a hundred dollars. He gave it to God through the church. I still don't know which of those two gentlemen was the messenger from God, but in that exchange, God's message to me was to help the stranger. And that's the message of Hebrews 13. Don't forget the stranger. While we continue to do that brotherly and sisterly love, acts of love, in our own church, in our own community, we also love the stranger. It's a both and. God's arms are wide enough to include all of us. That's why we have four pictures on our bulletin cover. The top two pictures are brotherly and sisterly love for the young people who are having a retreat at our church and for the new members that were received last week. Preston and Suzanne. And then the bottom two are our 
philoxenia, a stranger love. And it's shown through food relief that we gave to uh, Chinunka, the village in Malawi, and food relief that we give to the children and adults in Fairfax County, right here through schools and other agencies on Mount Vernon Day to Serve. And it's a great thing that because we haven't forgotten the people in Malawi or the school children in Fairfax, it was hard when I was writing out my sermon to call them strangers because isn't it true, Susan? They're really our friends. We're going on a trip to meet our friends. And when we care for one another, when we share in ministry and mission together, we no longer are strangers. We really are family, brothers and sisters, strangers, become friends. That's what the writer of Hebrews is telling the Christians in the first century church. And I need to let you know, the first century church in Palestine was a hard place to be a Christian. Christians were being persecuted. In other words, they were being thrown in jail, they were being killed, they were being eliminated from the jobs. It was a, not an easy time to be a Christian. And the house churches, they didn't have nice big churches like this, they had house churches. So they would meet in these house churches. And that was their only refuge from all the persecution on the outside. So it would be difficult, if you can imagine, letting a stranger into your house church because that stranger could end up being an informer. It was a time when Christians were hauled off to prison, and the prisoner that Hebrews writer wants us to remember could have been a friend, could have been a family member. And he challenges us, do not forget them. Don't forget the ones we know who are in prison. And then he goes on. Don't forget the strangers who are in prison. Imagine, if you will, being in prison with them. Imagine, if you will, being tortured with them. In Jefferson City, when I was there uh, about five years ago, the sheriff was a good friend of mine, and he was mighty proud of the new jail they were just building and getting ready to open. He was so proud of his new jail that he invited the people from the community to spend the night in jail. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to spend the night in jail and read a letter from a Birmingham prison by Martin Luther King Jr. and to read letters and papers from prison by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. As you know, I like to get the spirit, experiential stuff into my learning and worship. So I was all ready, but alas, the advertisement came out in the newspaper and I missed it. I missed the opportunity for what he called bed and bars. And I had to read those books at home. But in both cases, Martin Luther King Jr. and Dietrich Bonhoeffer were unjustly imprisoned. And they were both speaking out for justice. King made the point in his letters from a Birmingham prison when he said, everything that Adolf Hitler did in Germany was legal. And he puts the quotes there. And everything the Hungarian freedom fighters did was illegal. And he has the quotes. It was illegal, Luther says, Martin Luther King says, to aid and comfort a Jew in Hitler's Germany. Even so, he says, I'm sure if I lived in Germany, at that time, I would have aided and comforted my Jewish brothers. Isn't that interesting? Martin Luther King Jr. doesn't even call them Jews or Jewish people. He calls them brothers and sisters because he knows that when you share love with each other, when you share compassion with each other, when you share a concern, care and concern with each other, we move from being strangers to being brothers and sisters. But Martin Luther King's challenge came back at me. And I have to wonder, what would I have done? What do I do? How about you? What would you have done if you had been there at that time? That's exactly what the writer of Hebrews is telling us. He says, what at best you can, treat the stranger among us as we would treat our family. With brotherly love, Philadelphia, 
and, a big and, strangerly love, philozenia. That's our dual calling. It's not one or the other, it is both and. And sadly, the dominant mood today seems to be another xenia word, xenophobia, the fear of strangers, rather than philo xenia, hospitality to the stranger. The writer of Hebrews says, remember our leaders. This is good, Hebrews wants us to pay attention to our leaders. Those who spoke the word of God to you. So the Hebrews writer is saying, listen to what our leaders say and discern, is it the word of God? Does it mesh with what this Bible says to us? And then he goes on to say, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. So when we are, are, are following our leaders, we look at, does their word correspond to this word? And do their actions correspond to what God calls us to do and be? See, Hebrews is never about being a blind follower, but being a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ and discerning those in leadership according to God's word and the fruit of their lives. That was important in the first century church. That was important in Nazi Germany. That was important in the United States in the 60s with the civil rights. And that's important for us today and always. The writer of Hebrews goes on to say, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. See, our church is a great place to practice Philadelphia and Philozenia. We have a chance on September 21st to package food for strangers who are hungry as we share the Mount Vernon day to serve. And then on September 13th through 15th, we'll get a chance to do both. We'll be able to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ in our churchwide retreat, but we're expanding the invitation to our presbytery. So folks from Mount Vernon and folks from Calvary and folks from Bush Hill and folks from throughout our presbytery may come and we'll have a chance to welcome them. And they won't be strangers for long. They'll become brothers and sisters in Christ. And then on September 16th through the 28th, Susan and I get to be the strangers. We're gonna be in a strange land. We won't know the language. We won't really be that familiar with the money, the transportation, when we visit Malawi. But I will guarantee you one thing, they will welcome us with open arms, not as strangers, but as a brother and a sister in Christ. And we'll worship together, we'll serve together, we'll learn together, and we'll grow together in the name of God. So, we don't have to choose, that's the good news, between loving our family, loving the stranger, and when we gather at this communion table today, remember the words of the hymn that we'll sing in just a minute. As Christ breaks bread and bids us share, each proud division ends. The love that made us makes us one. And strangers now are friends. And strangers now are friends. Amen.
Friends, this is a joyful invitation, a joyful feast of the people of God. They come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all those, every age, to come and share this feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let, it the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. Now in your wisdom you made all things and you sustained them with your power. You formed us in your image in this world to love and to serve you and live at peace with all your creation. When we rebelled against you, you didn't reject us, but you claimed us as your own. You sent the prophets to call us back and then in the fullness of time, out of your great love for the world, you sent your only Son to be one of us, to redeem us and transform our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choir who forever sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of majesty and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, who is our Lord. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, opened blind eyes, broke bread with outcasts and with sinners, and he proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and the needy, and he was crucified. Rising from the grave, he gave us victory over sin and death. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from this creation the bread and the wine, and we joyfully celebrate his rising as we await the day of his coming. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts, bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ that we may be one with all who share this feast, as this bread is Christ's body for us. Send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Hear us as we share the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of his arrest, took the bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, this is my body which is broken for you, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after he had supped, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink ye all. For as often as you drink of this cup and eat of this bread, you proclaim the Lord's day till he come again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you the people of God, come and receive these gifts that God offers in Christ. Elders. This is the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
come and receive the gifts. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for this supper shared in the spirit of your Son, Jesus the Christ. God, we pray this day for all who are sick. We pray especially for Catherine's mother, Linda Spitzer. We pray that you will be with her as she has surgery on Wednesday. We pray for the people in our congregation who are also having surgery this week. We pray that you will walk with each one, strengthen each one, hold each one, be with Gail, be with uh, Marge, be with all in our congregation who are also traveling and traveling to be back here. And be with this church as we seek to serve you. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.
forever and ever. Amen.